The River Wye stretches 155 miles from its source on Plinlimon in Mid Wales to the Severn Estuary. For much of its length the river forms part of the border between England and Wales and cuts through some of the most beautiful countryside the UK has to offer. Join us as we take on a three day section of the River Wye from Horwithy to Redbrook, from its tranquil soft flowing water to fast flowing rapids through small towns and remote countryside, all the while being surrounded by a vast and varied amount of beautiful wildlife. Hello, welcome to another video. I'm here on the River Wye with Why Not It's Fern from such Instagram accounts as this one, Foraged by Fern. And we're just about to set off on a three day canoe trip. We've got some rapids involved and a lot of wildlife. I'm down south, this is what it is now. We've, I've, I've switched out mountains for flat rivers. And we're about to launch. Fern's just looking at the map. It's not actually a map, it's a guidebook filled with helpful cartoon pictures. There's a naked man here. Consider Any? other people, no nudity, Paul. Uh-uh, that's me. <laughs> oh, there's a little, there's a few little maps. There's plenty of places you can rent these canoes and it was £210 for both of us for this canoe for three days, which I think is a bargain. The excitement was palpable as we readied our boat to set off on our adventure. Fern putting one foot into the boat, expecting it to sail off with ease, bottomed it on the floor and went crashing shin first into the sea. She took it like a champ, we had a good laugh and off we went. River cow. Yeah, I was going to say, what? who's got sarnies? Battenberg? Wait, look at that! Wow. Quite athletic for a cow to be honest. Yeah, they do that when they're happy I think. He's happy then. Oh, he's just had some Red Bull. So this is our first encounter with an Aggie Swan. To be honest, and I'm not, for all you nature lovers, being horrible, but if it did attack, I'd just wrap canoe around its head and that would be that. Medic! I've just seen a medic in a tree that looked like, um, I mean, I'm gonna say it was like a monk jack deer or something. And the water must have been so high that it's died and it's got caught up there and then it's just, river's gone down and left it up there. That's all I can think. And it does take a while just to sort of calm yourself down and get yourself into the, the way of the river, slowing yourself down. As you know, I'm into my birds, and this is the place for it. There's so many. Uh, we just looked up and saw it. I think there was like... Uh, Kingfisher! <laughs> Got it, while I was filming. Oh, you won't have seen it on here because they're so small, but over there to the left. Neon blue, that's... I was just about to say we'd seen like two or three red kites and buzzards all above us. It was pretty cool, and then I was about to say but the elusive kingfish has not been seen yet, and Bosch. We've had to get out because it's uh, we've been bottoming it, and then it gets deep here. In the banks there, right at the top of the bank, all the little holes where the sand martins live. There's loads of them dotting around. Yeah. Catching flies up, this, this is picking them up. Beauty. We've stopped at, we're calling Battenberg Bay. Just down from uh, Sand Martin Mansion. Oh, look at that. Murdoch! What is that? I can't identify it. It is a fish, but I don't know what sort it is. Big one. Decent size. It's obviously got trapped in this pool and then warmed up and medicked out of here. What have we got? We've got um, a tin of chilli and some bread. Bread? Chilli? Or uh, noodles, but I wanted to go foraging and put green stuff in the noodles, so maybe not those, because well, we could. Fern wants to ruin our noodles by putting <laughs> green stuff in it. So they give you two of these big barrels when you start. They've got these clips on, so if you go overboard, they'll float and keep all your stuff dry. You have a rope attached so you can tie it onto the boat. And that's pretty cool. So you can just decant your bag into these and they hold quite a lot of stuff. These have got everything from a, 
a 48 litre rucksack in there and more. Cook kit of choice. So, because I'm not hiking, I can bring me bigger. I think this is the Tox 1500. And then inside, nested inside, we've got the 500. And then a small gas and a bigger gas because Fern's got her cook kit as well. So if you want to get like a breakfast on and a cup of tea at the same time, we've got that option. But for now, we're going to cook some chilli and have some chilli and bread. And the stove of choice, for all you stove nerds, is me Soto Windmaster. If you want to have a look at them in closer detail, oh, oh that's pissing out. Woo! Pissing out at Primus. I better let that evaporate a little bit before sparking it up because I don't want to go up in flames. Right, the Soto Windmaster, as the wind picks up, it can deal with this. This needs a bit of a wash. It's a bit grimy. What do you want me to do? Do it washing up. Huh? Not really. What's wrong with that? It's just got a bit of I don't know what. Maybe, Maybe from another little bygone era. Voila! Clean. Oh, voila. Oh my god, babe. It's kind of voila. The Soto Windmaster does it again. I love it. I swapped out. I did have a, a BSR tiny little thing that I could I could put it in I put it in like my 550 to, uh, pot and everything was self-contained in there as like one cook kit. Can't do that with the Soto, but I don't mind because it's so good. It's got a built-in ignition. You can regulate your, your cooking temperatures, whereas the BSR just sort of focused everything in the middle of my pot. And so it would burn everything in the middle and then everything around the outside wouldn't cook. What have you got? One of these babies. Wow, yeah. what is it? It's a... Um... Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. A Tokes Titanium 750? Yeah. You yeah. are in the know. I know, I know. What else, What's in there? Oh, I've got two little foraging bags. And then I've got this little bit that goes on top. MSR, that looks, looks like an MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Yes, it is. I was, I was about to say that. So yours is a self-contained cook kit? Yeah. What else you got? A little cloth. What's that for? Uh, so everything doesn't go rusty. Brilliant. And I've got a spork. Also titanium. Titanium spork, super lightweight, super strong. So strong. <laughs> I can lift a horse <laughs> with this spork. Tinned chilli, fresh bread. Good? Thank you. My knife of choice for this trip. I did bring my SE3 just in case. We ended up doing a bit more bushcrafty stuff, but for everyday use, it's just the spider car. And today I'm going to use it for the manly activity of slicing Battenberg. Yeah. Hooray, the fans cry. <laughs> Got a bit squished, but to all my American or people who aren't from the UK who don't know, this is Battenberg. It's pink and yellow sponge, some sort of jam in the middle of it and then marzipan on the outside. Don't ask me why, but it's delicious. I'll tell you why, because it's pink and white sponge with marzipan around it. Thank you. There's some Battenberg for you. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Sorry guys, so this is what it's come to again. Not again, I've never really reviewed Battenberg before, but I've done stuff that isn't to do with canoeing. Right, Battenberg. Well, it's it's not very moist. It's quite a claggy. I just thought it was going to be a straight up 10 out of 10. It's not a Botham's Battenberg cake though. It's an eight. And there's nothing more exciting than after a break is pushing your boat out and feeling that weightlessness as you drift off to continue your adventure. Just like spending a night somewhere, if you're stopping with your canoe, obviously leave no trace. You expect me to walk through that, do you? And we're off to see the wizard. Uh oh, good paddle then. Oh. <laughs> Turn paddle. Put it paddle. On your right hand down. That's it. Go, go, go. Keep you what you're doing. <laughs> right. Look, oh, they're big rocks. And I'll just not do nothing and look at them. Oh, they're big rocks. Looks like if we hit them, it'll be horrible. Ooh. Oh, I wouldn't want to hit them rocks. Someone better just 
paddle out of here. I don't know who. Not me, surely not. I, I was paddling. Got. I was. <laughs> right. It's good to know what we're up against. In West Philadelphia, born <laughs> Ray. I've told to no one else. We're about due another kingfisher sighting. You see this here? That is that's a kingfisher there, but it's fat. And it sat down and he's a fat lad. Using the flexi tail pump, you can just leave it doing what it does and it'll blow your bed up without having to worry about it. We come through the bridge. We've had some food at the White Lion, which was delicious. They've got showers and it's only a tenner a night and you can pitch anywhere along here. We're in the Southern Cross 2. The Terra Nova Southern Cross 2, which is a two man tent. Fern is in her Rab Neutrino 600. This is the female version. I'm in my Rab Ascent 900. I'm in the Neo Air Uberlite. Fern is in the Xtherm Extra Large. She's got the Decathlon pillow. I've just got my clothes wrapped in a dry bag. And that's it for the night. And confirms freezing cold, so she wants to get in now. Go on then. And that's us. We're going to bed down. We're going to get up early, head off. I think it's about a two hour, a two hour paddle to the next place so we can get a coffee and some breakfast slash brunch. And uh, you're <laughs> ready for snoozing. It's been a long day out river. <laughs> Why? Morning glampers. There's the digs. There's the canoe. We pulled it up here. That's where we'll launch today. This bit outside where the toilets are always open. They've got showers you can use for like 20p for five minutes of hot water or something. As I said last night, it's the, oh, bird shot on it. Come on. It's a four season, it's a bit, maybe a bit excessive because it's heavy, but when you're canoeing, you can afford these things. You can bring a bit of luxury. Fern says she prefers the big Agnes. We can't use that one because it's getting raffled off with an electric mountain bike. It's a bit small. These two man, these two person tents aren't really two people. It's a, it is a, it's a tight squeeze in there. I'm looking to get the three person Big Agnes tent so that me and Fern can use it on our hikes and have a bit more room. So I'm raffling off the two person with the mountain bike. Um, if you want to be in with a chance of winning the Big Agnes and the electric mountain bike, I'll leave a link below. Um, a percent of that does go to Mental Health UK and the rest goes back into the channel and I really do appreciate it. Oh, oh. I don't know what I'm doing here. Ugh. How did you sleep? A 10 out of 10. No, my shoe! And now my sock! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my shoe! And now my sock! Right, guys, I don't think it's 8 o'clock in the morning. We've not set off yet. And it's already a shoe is in the soup. Oh, okay. I'm going in. I assume there was fair negotiation. Who got the red feet? Yeah, short straw, I'm afraid. What can you do? Like guys, don't let me fall, girls. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm princess. You've got your shins wet. Oh, you've left your um nothing. <laughs> you rarely see such a high concentration of like different species all hanging out together. And you'll look to one side and there'll be like cows, swans, ducks in the air, there'll be buzzards and stuff. It is lovely stuff. And also for all you insect fiends out there, you can fill your boots because it's that time of year, everything's hatching. There's plenty of lovely like flies. <laughs> and uh, dragonflies and stuff like that. The guy on the, uh, who gave us our safety brief said this bit can be a bit troublesome. And I found out the hard way 
when me and Joy D stacked it, but I'm sure that was Joe's fault. Uh, and I've got here, we've got Fern, who's an expert canoeist. So we go through this bridge, and then we have to stick to the right, but not get sucked into the trees. We f***ed it already! I have... Ah! <laughs> Babe? We're good. Oh, well, it was. I'm surprised we lived through that. That was mental. Oh, well, that was a adrenaline rush. So glad I uh, phoned everyone I loved and said goodbye. Our communication skills Yeah, well, I've got a GoPro in my mouth. <laughs> Let's see that. Well, maybe that's the first part. That's another thing. And we're off. A lovely little stop there at the... It was somewhat like the Paddler's Cafe. It's just a little bus. Lovely guy who owns it. If, you, if you're if you down this way, please do check him out. Get yourself a brewski and a butty. So we're just going to take it leisurely. Let the river do the work. We're going backwards for some reason. <laughs> That's what seeing a kingfish will do to you guys. Discombobulated. Backwards is the new forwards. Is the new forwards. <laughs> <laughs> we should continue back just down the river and heckle anyone going forward. <laughs> Shall we? Yo, you guys are so 2022. <laughs> <Good form match. laughs> Excuse me, Gadge. Give hand. We're trying to. <laughs> we got ourselves a pet. The water's running pretty fast here, and I should really be paddling to help. But I just wanted to tell you this: we've seen that possibly my greatest, the greatest wildlife experience of my life. One of it's definitely top three. And Fern caught it on film. Oh my god! He's got one. It made me well oh, I got emotional. I was I was so invested in it. So if I bring you nothing else today, I'll bring you half a screen's worth of Fern's footage of a kingfisher diving and fishing. King of fishing. dropped our boat back off at the higher place and spent the evening in ye old ferry inn with a beautiful view of the river then in the morning it was back to the canoe higher place to get a smaller boat repack for the day and take on the rapids i'm gonna wear one of these at home yeah just yeah. around the house just for minor falls oh, i good. feel very safe do you get yours on the right way oh we are paddling down through the middle as you can see the rapids are not straight there is a bit of a curve yeah okay so your steering needs to be on point if you manage to capsize in the rapids, the most important thing you do is get away from the boat, keep holding your paddle, line your back. Head upstream, feet downstream. That way if you impact something, your knees are going to bend, you're going to take the, the pressure away. Do not try and stand up. <laughs> God, you keep stopping. You keep... <laughs> Why do you keep swapping me? Why are you swapping loads? <laughs> I'm steering, we've done it. We've done it, it was easy. Absolute panic stations. Just done the rapids and we conquered the rapids. They've given us a smaller boat, so it's a lot more maneuverable as we only need one barrel for now. And the lads were brilliant. They talked us through it, took us down, had a little look 
at where we were supposed to be going through the rapids and uh, we smashed it fern smashed it and now we're on this huge bit of river it's nice and peaceful <gasps> Right, we've just stopped on this beach for dinner. We've got some sort of packet noodles and then we're gonna buff them out with some foraged goods. Because there's plenty of greens here. Whoa, beautiful. I think we're even gonna make a, a mint tea as well. We've got some water, get it boiled up. Mugwort. There's all sorts of bits and pieces. In comparison to hiking, canoeing is just so much, like it's a lot easier. Because obviously the river's taking you, them big barrels carry your load. So you can just, you're just chilling. It's no way as demanding as a multi-day hike when you're putting in like 20 plus miles a day. I'm gonna try and get a fire going. I've not, um, I've neglected my bushcraft. I've neglected it, and which means my me, uh, me little tin, my fire lighting tin is woefully understocked. I've got a flint in there, I've got some 100% cotton that I've not yet changed into char cloth, fire steel, and that's it. So and there's no silver birch, there's no pine resin, there's no nout like that. I'm just having to make do with what I've got. My fire steel, it's a bit naff. It's only the little version. It's the small version of the light my fire. You can't tell how big they are on the internet, so I ended up with a little diddy version. Deal with it. And my SE3. My plan is to split this bit of dry, super dry wood. If we can split it and then shave to the end with like big bits and then get progressively smaller and then use the 90 degree on the back to fluff up some dust. Hopefully that'll take a spark, hold it up, and the rest of it will just set on fire and then into the bush box. That's the plan. We might be having, we might be using gas, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Freshwater mussel. So bigger bits at the top, just get progressively smaller and then we'll switch to the 90 degree on the back of the blade. It's not my preferred method, but uh, any beach in a canoe and all that. There we go. Go on, boy. I shouldn't lose that. That's it's bone dry because of like it's sunny and it's driftwood, so it's pretty dry. There you go, mate. I do have my uses after all. Look, I'm good for getting fire going. Tools at trade. Oh, see how deep it is. Not very. Big skim. No. The direction was a bit wild, wasn't it? it? My hand doesn't release when I tell it to release. Yeah. So the direction was off granted. Okay, you ready for this one? Go on then. That's um, not bad. That's not bad. Six out of I ten. Like Five out of ten, she's gone down. Like right, is this boiling? I haven't taken long. Yeah, that's boiling. Oh, this one comes with two packets. Mm. Bougie. But yeah, I'll keep an eye on this. You want to go and get some greens? She's on it. And then bring us back the greens and you can talk us through the greens. Greens. But some people are saying, who needs greens when you've got this little baggie full of greens? And no, it's not weed, it's herbs. Food herbs. There we go, I've added the sauce and the bag of mystery dried herbs. Lemon cheese. Oh, it smells good. I've got, these are mustard leaves. 
spicy, stimulating, delicious, but they're quite fiery. So I might just cook, we should cook, like slice them up and just put them in the pan for like a, the last minute. Yeah. Are you getting bitten by horse flies again? No, I'm good. Okay. Right, so these are spicy. Spicy. Spicy mustard spicy leaves. Spicy mustard rockety. Then some clover leaves. Good for digestion. Good for digestion. Anti-inflammatory. Needed. Yeah, so we can put those in as well. Uh, they don't really need to be cooked, but they can be cooked. And rose petals, because joy. Joyous joy rose petals as a garnish. Yeah, I'll keep those because they don't need cooking. Sorry about this, lads. <laughs> Rough chop. In your pot. Look at that, instantly healthier. <laughs> Can you garnish it? Because I, I can't eat this peasant food <laughs> unless. Oh. oh, that was a that was an uneven garnishing. PS store resistance. Instagram versus reality. And ah. There <laughs> is Instagram, guys. Are you what are you trying to say that you're going to take off those rose petals? As soon as that camera goes off. Yoink. Oh. Oh, for God's sake. You didn't take the... <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Delicious. Well, at least try the greens. No, they are actually... I like rose petals and it is... It goes well with, like, spiced noodles. It looks <laughs> wonderful. Oh, yeah. Let's get some of the... Uh, the fiery clobber. Mmm. And it's what you want. It is. It's fiery, but the noodles are spicy as well. But just that iron rich greens. You feel like it's good for you. And it feels like you're not eating packet noodles. Well done, Fern. Excellent teamwork there. I got the fire going. Fern got the food. Um, <laughs> the garnish. The garnish. <laughs> <laughs> um, naked and afraid got at us. Right, noodles done. We're just gonna have a bit of mint tea. I'm gonna treat you to a better aesthetic because I'm with an aesthetics champion. So before, you were just next to a muddy hill and I thought that was okay, but no. This, this is what you deserve. Not what you always get, because webs, but it's what you deserve. So there you go. Mint, Fern, do you have any mint? Okay. No, it's okay. Delicious mint. <laughs> there we go. So that's it. Is it even mint? There's bits of all sorts in there. I'll get it. You come with me. This is how quick it is. Look, sauce to mouth. Look, some here. Grab a few of these top bits. So the plant can keep growing. If you're into that sort of clobber. You don't need a lot of it. It's quite pungent. There we go. Mentha aquatica. Is it? Oh. Well, that's got grass in it. Grassus aquaticus. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, if you're going in, go in. If you're going in, go in. If I whatever, go out, I'll go home in it in the mint game. Oh. Bit of a rough chop. In we go. There we are. Perfect. <gasps> There's a catkin in my mint. Oh dear. Basically what it's doing is making the water taste nice and like with any mint tea it's full of antioxidants and things like that and, and as well more than anything it's just a celebration isn't it of nature grabbing what you can just from behind you whacking it in your pot getting all them flavours it's good times and we're going to go for a swim and this this will be our our warmer for when we get back out Don't you worry We're going to find All we need in our sunset Bubbling away, nice and stewed, and that's ready. So the mentha aquatica, and I only know mentha aquatica because it's one of the only ones that I can still remember from horticultural college. I can take all that out. Fern did wash these mint leaves before we put them in because there's lots of like arable farming going on and stuff around here. Nothing like a piping hot drink on a boiling hot day next to a fire. All right, let's get it on. Mmm, that is nice. Yeah, they say that hot drinks are supposed to cool you down, but I can't. It's not, I don't get that feeling of it. Also, it'd be nice 
crushed up with a bit of tonic water, a bit of ice, maybe a bit of lemon, maybe a splash of, a splash of gin. And put it in a little cocktail for you. Combine harvest is going, but you can't be grudging it because, you know, make hay while the sun shines and all that, and that's what he's doing, exactly what he's doing. Could be pissing it down for the next few days, so my mate's got to, he's got to get after it. This time of year, I would always recommend not having fires out in woods because I've seen too many fires get left and what they do is they just they can burn underground for weeks and then pop up we saw one recently on our way to Whitby that are just the the old steam train near Whitby had bezed along and caught a bit of the the stone under its wheel it shot out like you would a flint and steel into the heather it's gone underground and it's just combusted and the whole side of this bank was on fire I've seen it happen so many times, I've spoke to firemen about it as well, so I would recommend not having fires this time of year if you can help it. And if you do, keep it contained like this in a bush box. There's just stones, and then I can just get rid of it in water, and look! The lads! Uh, uh, Dave at the back, you didn't, quite get, you didn't quite stick the landing as I was finishing what I was saying. Can we go again? Dave? He's in attack mode. Dave doesn't know who he's dealing with, I don't think. Hey, up. Wait a minute. I might get off the back. I might get. Is this? He looks big, man. Shit. <laughs> Ow. <Aww. laughs> I don't like it. Oh, help me. <laughs> Am I gonna. I don't want to have to hit a swan. We don't. No one's hitting a swan around these parts. Unless it goes for you, then it's. Um, I'll. Well, I'll spin in back that? elbow it to the face. Because. Okay. That one's trying to get, well this one here, let's call him Dave, is trying to have his way with Susan. And Susan's just not having any of it. We're just, we're just caught in a love triangle. Oh, okay. Cause That's I thought, all. I thought it was more about us, but now I realise it's about Susan I do feel <laughs> Yeah, no. Susan's just trying to not get Daved. Go on, Dave. <laughs> Go on, Dave. No, is Dave. This, yeah, Dave. Susan. Look, Dave, you, you're not respecting Susan's boundaries. Susan's looking at me like she wants me to protect her, and I, I can't. What are you going to do against Dave? Oh, nothing. I was scared of Susan. Look how big Dave is. Literally, He's ma she's coming over to be like, guys, help me out. Yeah, there's not what we can do. I, like, I'm David Attenborough, and I can't... Um, you're not meant to get involved. Don't Dave. interfere in nature. Because also, we might have just made up this entire... <laughs> yeah, I might have uh, force fed Dave some Viagra and let him get a bit... Run, Sue, run! Right, what was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted by swans? I just want to... Oh, yeah, fire safety, that was it. Susan, look. There are numbers you can call. <laughs> I am getting this out to take care of Dave. I'm just putting it away so that I don't stand on it in my bare feet whilst heroically running away from Susan. Ah, <laughs> oh, she's cornered on the beach. Are you glad? Do you want to watch this? Because this is this is nature. Look, Dave, I'm trying to uh, just chat about fire safety, and you. <laughs> Here we go. Dave, that's... I don't want to get caught up in Dave's. He looks aggy. Very aggressive, Dave. Very aggressive posture, David. Try reading her a poem. I feel like she'd prefer that. Yeah, buy her a drink at least. Don't touch the fire, Sue. Are they called swans because they've got an S shaped S neck? Yeah. Good luck, Sue. I feel you'll need it. <laughs> Keep going, Sue. Uh uh. Down. Uh uh. Yes, good idea. She's flying off. Oh no. Oh god, he's relentless. Where was I? So we can just empty it out into the water. The beauty. The beauty of the bush box. Don't lose your trivets. I'll say that. And then we can even just dunk her in. As long as you dry her out properly. Which I will do. I'll probably forget actually. You'll <laughs> tune into my next bushcraft video and this will be brown. Don't step on stones that are boiling hot either. That's another top tip. No trace left. Sue looks like she's uh, got rid of Dave full time and she's happy. All is good with the world. We finished. That's it. Opposite the pub. We've finished, but I can't do a sign off now because I'm signed, but we're waiting to get picked up. I might do, in fact, thanks for watching, goodbye. And there we have it. 
three days on the River Wye. There are plenty of canoe hire places on the Wye and lots of different sections you can do. Whether it's a multi-day adventure or just a few hours paddling about with your friends and family. I was trying to put this into words myself, but I think I'll leave you with this quote from the gaffer, Mr. Raymond Mears. The canoe is the most magical way to see the wild, to get close to wildlife. You really are communing with nature when you travel in a canoe. I really enjoy it. It's also a great panacea for the world we live in today. When you paddle a canoe, you learn to move at the pace of the water, and the sooner you accept that fact, life becomes much easier and simpler. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.